Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, I'm Dan Shoemaker, CSO of Fate Therapeutics. Um, we are a publicly traded company, so here is the required forward-looking statement. Um, so we are a 70-person company located just down the street. Our mission is to develop first-in-class cell-based immunotherapies for cancer and immune disorders. We focus on T cells, CD34 cells, and NK cells, and our core strategy really involves using small molecules and genetic engineering to program or enhance the therapeutic properties of these cells prior to administering them to patients. Today, I'm going to tell you about a uh, focus on our IPSC platform, which we're using to create off-the-shelf versions of these program cellular therapies. So this has been a, a, a transformative summer for the field of cancer immunotherapy, starting with the FDA approval of Novartis's novel CAR-T therapy for kids and young adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Shown here in the picture is uh, Emily uh, Whitehead, who back in 2012 was the first patient to receive a CAR-T therapy. And today, five years later, she's cancer-free and thriving. And her and her parents actually uh, presented a, at the FDA advisory panel this summer as an advocacy for this, this drug, which received unanimous uh, approval. One of the people uh, on the uh, committee uh, reviewing this drug was Dr. Timothy uh, Kripe. And he was quoted at the end saying, I think this is the most exciting thing I've seen in my entire lifetime. So this breakthrough was followed shortly by the acquisition of Kite Pharma by Gilead for nearly $12 billion, which really serves as another external validation and gave this emerging field a ton of, of, of momentum. So again, this autologous CAR-T manufacturing strategy is really a, an excellent example of how we can program the immune system to fight cancer. The way this manufacturing works is you isolate T cells from a patient, you send them to a central manufacturing facility where the cells are activated, transduced with a viral construct containing the, 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 the CAR uh, targeting moiety. The, the, the genetically engineered cells are then expanded, cryopreserved, and then shipped back to the hospital where the patient is. Uh, they then, you know, cells are infused into the patient where they've now been reprogrammed to target the cancer cells, and, you know, the clinical results have been nothing short of, of uh, phenomenal. Um, however, there are some manufacturing challenges. It takes two to three weeks to go vein to vein to generate these CAR T cells, and the price for a single dose is $435,000. Um, $435, so at Faith Therapeutics, what we're doing is using our IPSC platform to create an off-the-shelf uh, version of this therapy. Um, again, just to highlight some of the, the limitations which we're trying to address is, is today, uh, the cell source is, is, is patient-specific, the genetic engineering is random and variable. Again, um, you end up with heterogeneous products. It's challenging enough to insert a single targeting element, such as a car, Going after solid tumors is probably going to require multiple targeting elements. Uh, and as I just highlighted, the delivery can take up to three weeks, and uh, it's expensive, and you get a single dose. So we believe using a master cell line, it enables um, precise and complete engineering. It will generate off-the-shelf versions of this therapy. The products can be homogeneous, you know, available on demand, and it will also enable uh, stepwise uh, multiple engineering, so we could put a lot of functionality into these cells. And it's also going to allow us to create multiple doses in a, a very cost-effective fashion. So the way we do this is we use human iPSC cells, and this is where we perform the genetic engineering. Um, after doing the engineering, we select a single cell, a clone, which is then expanded to create a master cell bank. And it's from this master cell bank that you could drive uh, expansion and, and create large quantities of INK cells and IT cells but then can serve as an off-the-shelf homogeneous solution for, for patients. And again, this approach really addresses some of the limitations I highlighted using the autologous patient-specific manufacturing. The backbone of this is a clinic-grade iPSC cell. So for nearly the past decade, we've been working closely with our academic founders, Rudy Yanish and Shang Ding, to create this small molecule-based uh, iPSC platform. And shown on the bottom of the, is an example of a cocktail of four different small molecules that enables uh, highly efficient footprint-free reprogramming. Um, after you've generated your iPSC clone, we have a different set of small molecules that we use to clonally expand and create master cell banks of the iPSCs. And after this, we have different small molecules and cytokines that we use to drive the differentiation uh, into uh, therapeutic cells. 
again, we've been doing this for a long time and have uh, you know, amassed uh, a significant patent portfolio protecting this technology. Um, one of the most powerful things of this approach is that it's very amenable to genetic engineering. So we actually do the reprogramming and genetic engineering at, a, at the same time. And after that, individual cells are placed into the wells of a microtiter plate. And over the first 48 hours, you could see one cell uh, going through several divisions. And after um, several weeks, you end up with a confluent line of a clonal population of iPSCs. At this stage, you can then survey the cells and, and confirm pluripotency markers. You can look at the integrity of the genome with karyotype analysis. And after you've done your genetic engineering, you could also go in and confirm that the targeted engineering has occurred. So one example of this is inserting a car construct that is also marked with a GFP molecule. So the parental line shown here on the bottom uh, on the x-axis is uh, some pluripotent markers, so you can see a nice homogeneous population of iPSCs that are on the y-axis negative for GFP. So after we go through this uh, genetic engineering process where we've inserted this car construct into a safe harbor loci of the genome, you end up, and, and select a single clone, you end up with an amazingly homogeneous population of iPSC cells. So this is what goes into the master cell bank. We're also interested in making, uh, engineering the cell cells to have stealth, so they could be used across HLA barriers. You know, in this case, this is an example where we've engineered out the B2M gene to reduce class one gene expression. So again, shown on the bottom here is our parental line where it's uh, positive for B2M and class one expression. After going through the genetic engineering, picking a single clone, you now end up with a homogeneous population of, of iPSCs that are devoid of class one. So this would be something that might be stealthy and be able to avoid uh, immune rejection. Um, so this is a pluripotent cell. It could be turned into virtually any tissue in the body. At Fate Therapeutics, we've really focused on driving these cells down the hematopoietic lineage. Sort of the, the, the central node of this is a definitive CD34 cell, which can then be used to create uh, uh, IMDSCs for immunoregulatory applications, T cells, and NK cells. Today, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to give you two products that we're developing using this product uh, platform, one out of the, uh, an iPSC-derived T cell and one out of a, an NK cell. So let's start with the NK cells. You can't make a cell that you don't understand. So for the past three years, we've had the opportunity to work closely with three of the world-leading NK cell experts, and they've really helped us define what the optimal NK cell phenotype and properties are for cancer immunotherapy. And this has really helped guide the development of our small molecule guided differentiation protocols. So that to create iPSC-derived NK cells, again, you start with an iPSC, a very homogeneous master cell bank, and then the first 10 days, we drive this to the definitive CD34 node. And this is marked by CD34. Each iPSC turns into 134, so you already have a first step of, of expansion. After a positive selection step, these are then put into a different set of small molecules and cytokines, which drives these cells into the NK cell lineage. So at the end, just go to the bottom, we end up with a nice homogeneous population of CD56 positive, and on the y-axis here is NKG2A, which is another marker of the NK cell lineage, and this is the final product that will go into patients. It's interesting if you look up at day 26 and at day 16, you could see these things going from the iPSC to a 34 and picking up the expression of these markers. So the small molecules really drive not only the differentiation but the maturation of the NK cell. So again, one iPSC is turning into over a million um, NK cells. So as we now take, get ready to take this, this cell into the clinic, our, our plans are to file an IND early in 2018, We've, we first had to work on scaling this up to create enough cells to, to support clinical trials. Um, and again, so a single well of a 24-well plate contains thousands of iPSCs, and over a 50-day period, this can generate billions of these clinic-grade iPSC-derived NK cells. We've explored a lot of optimization during the, the, the scaling and the manufacturing. Uh, shown in the blue are, are, are NK cells expanded in a flask. In the red is, is the performance in a G-Rex device. And, and this is also very, uh, we're now exploring moving this up to the next level in bioreactors. So one of the things, this is almost infinitely scalable. So once you get it figured out, you could make as many of them as you want. So now thinking about filing this IND, we've done extensive characterization on these NK cells with respect to surface markers, gene expression analysis, in vitro cell killing, as well as in vivo models of both potency and toxicity. One very important question has been with discussions with the FDA, 
is making sure that there's no residual iPSC cells in the final product that is administered to the patients. So to do this, we've developed highly sensitive tests for detecting these residual iPSC cells. And, and specifically, we did genome-wide profiling, and we wanted to find transcripts that were highly expressed in iPSCs and not expressed at all in NK cells. So one of the genes we found that met these criteria was converted into a very sensitive qPCR assay. And shown in the blue bars is a spike in experiment. And basically, at the, the furthest left, we could detect a single iPSC spiked into over 2 million INK. So this is an incredibly sensitive assay. And on the furthest rest, we've been able to show in six different manufacturing runs that there are absolutely no detectable iPSCs in the final products. And so this has been a very important part of our CMT package that we're taking to the FDA and again to file this IND early next year. Um, one of the first engineered INK products we're going to take into the clinic uh, involves an engineered high-affinity non-cleavable CD16 FC receptor. This was originally developed by Dan Kaufman at, uh, when he was at the University of Minnesota. He's now at UCSD. And basically, this receptor is going to allow a very powerful ADCC activity. So again, we've cloned this thing into our IPSC line using the techniques I just showed you created a master cell bank, and this is what we're using to create large quantities of these uh, um, high affinity expressing uh, INK cells. Again, the clinical trial we're going to run with this will be in combination with approved monoclonal antibodies, and again, these cells are going to go after and take out tumor antibody coated tumor cells. Um, one of the things that the, the mutation does, normal NK cells with CD16, once they engage a target cell, the CD16 molecules are shed, which limits the ability of them to kill lots of tumor cells. By utilizing this uh, engineered version, we basically not only have enhanced and homogeneous expression of this targeting receptor, but it's also much more durably expressed because it's not shed during the target engagement. Um, shown here is a, uh, a demonstration of the killing potential of these cells. This is a mobilized, a, a peripheral blood derived NK cell taking out a, a SCOV3 ovarian cancer cell line, which is inherently challenging to kill with NK cells, which is demonstrated why this line is sort of flat. When you add antibodies, the cell line is also positive for both HER2 and EGFR. When you add antibodies into this assay, you could show enhanced killing, and this is a good way to measure ADCC activity. And our engineered IPSC uh, product that has this enhanced CD16 allele, not only does it by itself have a much more powerful killing, but when you combine it with the antibodies, it really maxes out the killing in this assay. We've also, getting ready for the you know, filing this IND, we've done extensive in vivo studies. Here's an example of mice uh, treated with luciferase um, uh, tumor cell lines that, that's HER2 positive. With no treatment, the tumor takes over. With Herceptin only, you have a modest control of the tumor. And finally, when you combine the Herceptin with this engineered INK, you get really good tumor control. So again, this IND will be filed in the middle of next year. And so finally, to wrap up, um, I'm going to tell you an example of how we're using the same exact technology to create a, a iPSC-derived CAR-T. We've been working with Michelle Satellin on this project. Again, similar to the NK work, we've developed a small molecule differentiation protocol that allows us to create T cells. Um, one of the breakthroughs we've had in the last couple months is we're now able to create um, uh, near homogeneous populations of single positive CD8 alpha beta T cells. And in this field of iPSC differentiation, this is a, a really big deal, um, and we're excited about this. So again, working with Michelle Satteline, he published a Nature paper earlier this year highlighting the importance of copy number of your CAR constructs. If you have too much CAR signaling, it actually results in exhausted T cells with poor performance. We've really followed the footsteps here and are now engineering our CAR constructs into precise single copy places in the genome. Again, we can create uh, engineered versions of this when we select the clones. We have near homogeneous engineered iPSCs that we're now converting into single positive CD8 cells. And in the last slide here, we're now taking these into in vitro characterization assays showing that these CD19 positive uh, directed CAR T cells can take out uh, 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 CD19 target cells while CD19 negative target cells are not um, hit. So today I just told you about two programs leveraging the iPSC uh, tech platform to create off-the-shelf NK and T cell therapies. We're also developing other versions leveraging this idea of program cell therapies in, in the 
um, and with NK cells. We were just initiating three clinical trials with Jeff Miller with this small molecule optimized adaptive memory NK phenotype. And on the bottom half, we have, again, a, a small molecule program, next generation graph in the setting of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. And the goal here is to reduce and pre or prevent GVHD. So finally, I'd like to thank the folks at Fate Therapeutics right down the street here, as well as our phenomenal academic collaborators we've been working with. So thank you for your attention.